my friend Lara Trump. Good morning, Lara. How are you? Good morning, Sid. You're you're ready to go. I feel like man, we came out hot this Monday morning, but I love it. <laughs> wow. Well, well, I mean, I just I don't understand what game they're watching. You know, you and I can sit down, Lara, watch a football game, and like the Niners and Eagles, the Niners won by twenty three points yesterday, and you're going to tell me after the game the Eagles won, but they lost by twenty three. What presidency did they watch? Well, but th- this is what they always do, Sid. This is how they operate on the left because. The truth is they don't sell people on actual cold, hard facts or any kind of truth. The uh, the way they operate is always in emotion. If you look at any argument they're making on the Democrat side, on the liberal side of the aisle, they kind of pull people into their party and get them to vote for them themselves by, by using emotion. It feels great to say, yeah, let's open the border. Let's let anyone who wants to come here pour on in. Well, that's great until you get slapped in the face with all of your systems being unable to to handle that. We can't have 15 million undocumented Americans, people living in America now that who aren't Americans, who broke our laws to come here. But we're headed down that path right now. They operate in emotion. And then when the rubber meets the road and actually people are, you know, have to deal with the reality of what these Democrats have set up, they have no other option but to lie. And everybody, as you just said, feels like things are going in the wrong direction. Man, take a look around. What is working better for you right now than whenever Donald Trump was president? Nothing. And most people look around and they can't find a single thing. Sid. Gas is more expensive. Inflation is still high. People aren't even, yeah, they're like, oh, unemployment's low. No, people stopped looking for jobs a long time ago. So those people aren't even counted in this system. We got wars around the world. It feels like we are in a very precarious spot as the United States of America. So you're right. What in the hell are these people talking about? That's all they can do, though, is lie because they have no other option. Nothing the Democrats ever touches turns to anything good. It always goes in the other direction. And here we are. You know, talking about lying, uh, I forget which channel it was, uh, what idiots it were. they were. By the way, Luke is very, very cute, Larry. You're right. He's very, very cute. Aww. I love him. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Um, Somebody said on one of these stations about your father-in-law a couple of weeks ago that he's really no friend of the Jews. Of course, let's not forget Charlottesville, and he hangs out and gets endorsed by the uh, the white supremacists. I said, I said whoa, 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 hold on, hold on a second. His daughter, his only daughter, converted. She's married to Jared Kushner. He's an Orthodox Jew. His grandchildren are Jewish. He's been to temple. He's been to shul on the high holy days. What in God's name are you talking about? You're with this man every day. He has proven time and time again through policy and family how much he loves and respects people like me, the Jewish people. And you never had a stronger president for the state of Israel than Donald J. Trump. Don't forget about moving the American embassy to Jerusalem, which, by the way, president after president after president before him promised they would do. It took Donald J. Trump to do it recognizing the Golan Heights for Israel. And you're right. He has three Jewish grandchildren. His daughter, Ivanka, converted to Judaism. His son-in-law, Jared, an Orthodox Jew. And by the way, if you look at his company, look at the Trump organization. He's had this company for decades. And the the top people in his company are all Jewish. Most of his friends, uh, because he's a New York guy, are all Jewish. It is absolutely ridiculous, of course, to say these things. But again, these are people who have really no argument to make on anything on the left. And so they they have to come up with this nonsense. Nothing makes me crazier, by the way, than what you just brought up, the Charlottesville thing. By the way, how this is how disingenuous these folks in the media are. If you go back and you rewatch what he said, he said there were very fine people on both sides, except the neo-Nazis and white supremacists Correct. who should be condemned Totally. Those are verbatim his words. But these people will never let you see that, Sid, because here's the truth. The truth is we never had a better time in this country in modern history than when Donald Trump was president. Things were working for people and the the swamp was actually being drained. These people were being exposed in the media in Washington, D.C. These people who go to D.C. make a lot of promises to their constituents around the country and then never deliver. They line their own pockets and they know that a Trump presidency the second time around is going to take them down. So they have to do any and everything they can to try to salvage themselves and this little system that they've set up. 
That is what this is all about. But you're right. It drives me crazy to see the lies and to see the way that people talk uh, about my father-in-law in this manner, especially given his family is Jewish. It's complete insanity. Well, I got you kind of fired up, didn't I now, Lara? <laughs> now I'm on board, Sid. Now we're on the same page. Here there we are. There you go. Perfect. Go. Well, you're always like this anyway. You're always, uh, you're a great, you're not a good, you're a great interview. And you're talking about your father-in-law, you know, for months and months and months. I'd bring on all these smart people, much smarter than me. And they would say, because I said it was over way back when, the day that your father-in-law arrived in East Palestine, Ohio, it was over. Done. Shut it down. But yet, for months and months and months, I got to hear about Ron DeSantis, who's upset today because Florida State is not in the college football playoff. I got to hear about Nikki Haley, who's turned out to be a real backstabber. but we saw that when she went out on your father-in-law, right in the middle of her run there at the, uh, at the White House. I got to hear about how we're still months and months away. Well, guess what? Now we're six weeks away. We're not months away from the caucus in Iowa, and your father-in-law is still beating these people half to death. When do you think the rest of the media will give him the credit he deserves? And when will the party start to unite around him because he's our only chance? Well, the media will never do anything positive for anyone with the last name Trump, myself included, my husband, anybody with our last name, forget it, especially Donald Trump himself. So they're going to kind of peddle this narrative for a long time. And, and by the way, it's really funny. You know, I, I think probably around a year ago or so, I came on this show with you, and if you recall, we were talking about Ron DeSantis, and everybody said, oh, Ron DeSantis, he's going to get in the race. Do you think that that will be a problem for Donald Trump? The truth is you can't try to do your best impression of the guy when the guy himself (laughs) is actually in the race. And I think, you know, the more indictments they've come out with against my father-in-law, the mugshot, all the hysteria, all the nonsense on that front, the way very obviously – Biden's Department of Justice has been weaponized against this one guy, all of this effort against one person. It really has backfired, I think, on folks on the left. When they thought that would take him down, it has only galvanized support behind him. And I think people see very clearly, Sid, kind of what you just said. He's the only hope. He's the only person who could go in there to that White House. First of all, he's done all of these things one time around. He got everybody's number and dance card the first time he was in D.C. Don't think he doesn't remember all the backstabbers, all the people who said nice things to his face and then turn around and said nasty things and did terrible things behind his back. He remembers everything. I've never met somebody with as great a memory as my father-in-law. He's got them all. And so he really is the only hope we have. When will this party galvanize behind him? I don't know why we waited so long. I don't know why we're wasting money going against, you know, other Republican, uh, the the obvious Republican nominee and other candidates, when we should be going against the Democrats, against Joe Biden, a guy who could barely string a sentence together and tie his shoes, yet they're trying to run him again? Are you kidding me? We cannot leave anything to chance in this next election, because I'll tell you something, if Donald Trump does not become the president of the United States again, Sid, I hate to even say it, but I don't know what kind of country we're going to have left. Look where we are right now, 2023. We got a whole nother year of Joe Biden as president. God bless us all. If we can manage to get through that, we have to elect Donald Trump. We have to get our country back. If not, we're not going to have anything left. Could not agree more. This is the great Larry Trump. You know, you described uh, Joe Biden. You can barely string a sentence together. You're 100% right. Guy falls up the stairs and goes to bed, you know, before the early bird dinner at 4 o'clock, all those things that an old, sickly person would do. But if that was all that was wrong with him, if that was the issue, I could almost I could almost give him a pass. But the truth is, he's so much more diabolical than that. First of all, he's a crook. He's involved in all these hunter dealings, and he's made millions and millions of dollars. Secondly, you look at what's going on with Israel right now. I had an argument with the guy at the New York Post, Michael Goodwin, last week. I called Joe Biden complicit, Lara, and I still feel that way. Not one, but two administrations, him with Obama, now him alone. He's tried to do Iran deals. He did it once with Obama. He has given them money. He has given them hostages. He has loosened restrictions. This is not just some old, feeble guy eating chocolate pudding and dripping down his lip. This is a guy that is partly responsible for Jews dying all over Israel. That's dangerous. Oh, well, you're exactly right. And by the way, all the things you just said are 100% accurate. 
he is complicit in this. And let's not forget his very first move as president of the United States. Right after he got inaugurated, Joe Biden went into the White House and I would argue made the single worst decision for the trajectory of this country and the world. He took away our energy independence. He shut down the Keystone XL pipeline. That allowed Russia to go into Ukraine and cause the mess going on over there right now. It took so much away from us as a country to take away our energy independence. We see gas prices sky high. We see inflation sky high. Look at the way it allowed Russia to enrich itself to commit all these atrocities that they have done in Ukraine. Likewise, it allowed Iran to enrich itself and provide Hamas with the ability to go into Israel and kill Jews. It is so sick to see how one single decision has snowballed and caused so many issues in this country and around the world. And it is because these people in the White House are dumb. Sid, these people are stupid. They don't have any idea what they are doing, or maybe they do, and it's all purposeful. Hmm. But look at the pain and suffering that it has caused. When you put dumb people in charge of things, (laughs) expect dumb decisions and bad outcomes, and that's exactly what we've seen happen with Joe Biden. So you're right. It is dangerous to keep people like this in power and give them any ability to make decisions that have real ramifications for real people's lives. God bless us all, like I just said, because we are going to need his help up above to make it through another year, and God willing, have Donald Trump as president to rectify all of that. That was a great point, the Keystone Pipeline, Lara. That was a great point. You're right. You could start right there. That was the beginning of the end. So in the final 60 seconds as we get ready for the caucus in in Iowa, and um, I'm so excited uh, for uh, your father-in-law's run. I really am. Tell me about the family morale. You know, look, the facts are the facts. Your husband, do I love Eric? He was in court not that long ago. Donald Jr. has been in court. Uh, Your sister-in-law has been in court. Your father-in-law has been in court here in New York a ton of times. And I know he gets on TV and he's spry and and looking as excited as ever. But behind the scenes, be as honest as you possibly could be, is Donald Trump and the Trump family feeling real good about, A, his chances as president the next time around, and just from a morale basis, how does the family feel? Honestly, we all take a lead from from the man himself. And I'll tell you, I've never seen a more remarkable person. He is positive. He's upbeat. He is confident. When you know you have the truth on your side, Sid, it really makes a difference. And we all know the truth about all of these things. And so uh, here's what I'll tell you. Here's a guy who's got the weight of the world on his shoulders, who is running for president of the United States, has cases around the country against him, a guy trying to throw him in jail who you know, because he's his political rival. And what did he do two weeks ago? He came to my daughter's, my kid's school, and went to my daughter's class for Grandparents Day and was happy to do it. I saw that. This is the yeah. character yep. of this man. And this is where, I, I, you know, you have to look at him for guidance. It's almost like you look on an airplane at the, the flight attendants whenever you see turbulence. He is not panicking. He is calm and cool as a cucumber. And I will tell you his confidence in the the election next year and in all of these ridiculous court cases is incredibly high. His morale is incredibly high. We all take a lead from him. And I'll tell you, we all feel great as sick and twisted as all of this is about the outcome, because we believe that there is a higher power in control of all of this. And that's the way we have to operate at all times. So we are great. We're doing awesome. We're here in, in a very special season of the year. And I'll tell you what, thank you to everybody out there for the prayers. He feels them. We feel them as a family. we got to keep that going. Let's take it all the way to November 5th, 2024. All right. That's what I'm talking about, Larry Trump. That was great. I saw the uh, the video on Instagram of of uh, DJT walking your little daughter into school. It was so cute. And uh, <laughs> it's all good. Happy holidays. You're, you're an amazing person, thank a great you. guest. Thank you for joining me today. And uh, let's get ready to party, Lara. We're going to get a big win coming up let's very, very it. soon. Let's do it. You're the best, Sid. Thank you so much.